So here's the Jayco J Flight SLX Baja Edition. Um, first thing you're gonna do when you approach the trailer is go to the lock box. Um, I'll provide you a code. You just enter that code, pull this tab, and the lock box is now accessible. To clear, to reclose the the lock box, you'll need to re-enter the code, and that'll allow you to access it. If for some reason you can't, just clear it until you, and then push the code again. And that'll allow you to put this back on there. Okay, there's the keys. Um, I don't have this on right now, but you're gonna have this trailer lock right here. Um, you're gonna need to unlock that. It'll be on the ball of the trailer hitch. And this key just goes in here and unlocks that guy. And you get the idea. Um, when you put it on your vehicle, uh, a couple things. Uh, you need to make sure that this tab is in the down position. I'm gonna, you're gonna get it with it in the up position. This locks it onto the ball for safety reasons. Um, second thing is, you're gonna wanna take your seven pin connector and plug it into your vehicle, which in my case is right there. And then you're gonna have your two chains, safety chains. And this one has a brake wire on it. I just leave that on the chain and you just hook those up to your hitch. Just like that. You do that with the other side. Make sure your seven pin connector is tight and all the way in. Make sure these are on and uh, the tabs are clicked over. This is all safety stuff. Um, we don't want anybody getting hurt using this. Um, so you wanna make sure this is all uh, buttoned up before you even move the vehicle. And then to depress this, you push this in and push it down. And sometimes it can be kind of tough. So if it's not really working, um, you can raise the jack off the jack stand or off the receiver and put it back down. And sometimes that makes it easier to, to get it back into place. So before you go anywhere, that's something you definitely want to do. And then you're going to rotate this and this is going to lift your... Um, your trailer jack off of the blocks and it'll be on some wooden blocks right here. Uh, you'll want to take those wooden blocks with you, put them in the cargo area on the side of the trailer, which I'll show you later, um, so that you can have those when you get to your site so you can uh, de-hitch. Okay, uh, propane right here, batteries right there, um, awnings on the outside, the door. So to unlock the door, uh, there's two locks. This one's the deadbolt, and this one's the handle. So when you get them unlocked, you should just be able to pull on the handle like that, and this will open. And then you just have your latch right here. And this slides into the door. That'll hold the door open. You have a screen door option by pulling this down. And then that can do your screen door. You can slide this over. It's, it's kind of tough sometimes. And from the inside, you just push down on this and it'll unlock the screen door. Okay. Uh, you have a handle to pull yourself up and down. These are your stairs. You just grab and pull. And then grab this one and push it down. Two stairs to get you into the trailer. Um, there's a spare tire. Hopefully you don't ever need it. There it is. Um... After you connect your hitch to your vehicle, you can take these chalk blocks out, put it in the cargo access area right there. Okay, to undo the trailer lock, you just insert the key here, turn it. Might need to take a little wiggling. Just come off just like that. And reverse to get it on there. Okay, chalks. You wanna put the chalk blocks, set them up anytime you're not hooked up to your pickup truck or a vehicle. Um, just put one on either side of the vehicle unless you obviously know it's going downhill uh, one direction and you can put one on each wheel. Um, typically when you level the vehicle, you're gonna use the leveling blocks to lift one side and then put the chocks on the other side. Um, that's where those are at. 
Um, when you're not using them, just go ahead and store them in the cargo space. So when you come to pick up the trailer, it'll be in this location. Um, don't worry about parking it here. I'll have you park it out front of the house. Bring it back, just park it right here. Just drop it off the trailer. Just uh, please don't block the driveway going back to the garage, but the other driveway, you're fine to block. So just park it right there. Okay, the interior of the trailer. So just as you come in, you've got a queen size bed. Um, it'll be in this configuration for travel. You don't want the table up while you're moving the trailer, um, could cause damage. And you've got a bench right here that can be used as a bed. That's the heater underneath the bench. That's your electrical fuse box, which you probably shouldn't have to do anything with. And you got your two bunks. Uh, the bathroom's through that door, a little pantry, a microwave oven, which that the microwave oven and the air conditioner all will only work if you're hooked up to power. Um, they will not operate off the batteries. Here's your sink, your stove, and a refrigerator and some cabinets. Okay, and here's the bathroom. Uh, you got a toilet um, and shower. Here's the shower, faucet, and the tub. To operate the toilet, all you do is pull this back. That's water out and flushes the toilet. Um, please, we will provide toilet paper um, this is special RV marine toilet paper. If you put normal toilet paper down, it can clog the toilet lines. Um, also, you have a light up here. All the lights operate with just an on-off switch. Very simple. Um, and you have this hatch to open. So you just turn this and it opens the hatch. So there's one of these here. And you always want to make sure these are stowed before you travel. Otherwise, it could potentially rip them off or if there's high winds. Um, you have another hatch right here. Main area, same operation, you just turn this down. Um, over here, you have a power outlet, runs off the battery. Um, this is a coax for the antenna. If you decide to bring a TV, you can put your coax from your TV into there and then crank this puppy and it'll raise the antenna. On the vehicle again you don't want to move this without having this stowed all the way so make sure it's stowed all the way um, here's a couple switches this one i believe is the outside light on off and then this is the interior light so you turn that on and it'll turn on this front light and this light okay if these don't work it's because these are switched off when you flip the switch but I always leave that one and that one on this switch right here. Okay. Um, blinds are easy to operate. Just up, down. Windows. Pull. Pull this, this out. And push the window open. Um, there's a second type of window. It's a little bit different. It's open. You grab this red lever. Pull it up and out. You push this until the bottom part clicks right there, and that'll hold the window open. Um, air conditioner, again, this won't work unless you're hooked up to the uh, ground power or generator. Very simple to operate on. Uh, you can change your fan speed. This is up, down. You can change the mode to cool, econ, or fan only. Um, you got a couple cabinets up here. Uh, the microwave, just basic microwave operations. You got a little pantry here. If for some reason the toilet or the sink have a foul odor coming from them, you can reach down in here. There'll be extra toilet paper down in there. There's some extra toilet paper. Um, there's a garbage can that I ask you empty before you return it. And then there's these tablets. Those are deodorizers and cleaners to put in the holding tanks. So if the gray or the, the sink, the tub, or the toilet start having a foul odor, you'll just want to drop one of those down in there, uh, flush some water with it, and those should freshen it up. Um, you have some storage underneath the stove and sink. Um, 
be careful there's some wires there and a hose um, just be careful what you put down there nothing really heavy and then here's the refrigerator um, there's two ways to operate this there's gas and electric so that's the off position if you want to just run off electric if you're plugged in again this won't run off the battery but if you're plugged into power you just turn it to that adjust this to whatever level you want and five I've had it on five and I've had some things freeze inside of this main compartment but you do have a freezer compartment right here um, to operate the gas so you turn this to gas you push and hold this and you click this repeatedly until this red bar moves over into the green and I may not have the gas on right now oh see it's moving and you just repeatedly click this until that moves into the green and then once that indicator is in the green you can release both the buttons and this is how you run it off propane um, if you're running off propane it takes a long time to get it cold so I'd recommend as soon as you get to your site uh, get it going um, also if you put your stuff in this thing cold it will stay uh, for probably four to six hours cool without opening it so those are your refrigerator options um, let's talk about this panel right here so this is how you turn the water pump on um, once that's on you can turn on the water to the sink um, and you can just leave that on and as you use water the pump will repressurize um, also on this you have your battery fresh black and gray tank indicators so you can push on the battery and it'll tell you how much is in there the fresh tank is empty black tank is empty gray tank is empty so you can just push on those and you can see what level you're at um, so you know if you need to go dump or if you need to charge the battery um, this is a stove I'm gonna have to get my lighter and show you how to run it it's very simple um, I'll show that to you in a bit this has got an overhead uh, hood for the stove you got a light and you got a fan which I'll push uh, steam out of the way so that is about it oh there is a smoke detector up here um, and down here is a co2 detector well, let's talk about the heater okay this is how you work the heater this is in the off position this thing's kind of hard but you got to push real hard and it'll click oh okay and it'll click over and then your thermostat is down here, so you can put it at low heat or very high heat. And that's how you run the heater. And the heater is right down here. So this is the on position if it's all the way to the right. It's in the on position if you want it off. You click it all the way to the left. Let's see. That is off. That is the off position to the right. On position is to the left okay this is how to operate the stove make sure your propane tank at the front of the trailer is in the on position turn this to light take your lighter you want to do that fairly quick if it doesn't light turn it off and leave it in the off position wait for the propane inside here to disperse and you can just adjust this to different heights Basic, and then make sure it's always in the off position before you transport. Okay, table conversion. So you need to take these cushions on the sides up, push these middle ones back. And same thing over here. Okay, and then that reveals the table, which comes up. Once you have the table up, you need to extend the legs. Make sure that these are all the way in the locked position so that the table 
will not collapse on you while you're using it. And there you go, you have a dinette. And then to take down is just the exact opposite. Okay, so you have some additional storage um, underneath this table cushion you just grab this wooden tab right here pull this up and you'll have some additional storage underneath this bench uh, the other side well, make sure this thing's flush before you put your cushions back on the other side has the fresh water tank so there's not really any storage over there plus it's also the outdoor cargo access um, underneath this bench you do have a little bit of storage right in here. Oh, that's the cargo area. Forgot about that. Um, the other place for storage is underneath the bottom bunk. You just grab this one, and there's a little bit of storage in there as well. Um, that's where you're going to want to put your heavier items. Keep them from sliding around. Uh, you probably don't want to put anything in this main area that can slide around that's heavy. Otherwise, you'll damage the trailer. Hopefully you never need it, but if you do, there is a fire extinguisher right here. Okay, stabilization jacks. So these are not to level the trailer. They're only to stabilize it once you have it level. So here's your hand tool, and here's the jack. Uh, you just put this on, and you twist it. And it'll lower and raise the jack stabilization jack and there's one of these in all four corners uh, the two on the, on the front uh, you gotta approach them from the front of the trailer and then the ones in the rear you gotta approach from the side rear and all you do is you uh, turn these down by hand to stabilize the trailer once it's level this is the cargo access area um, it's got little latches right here you gotta turn those vertical to unlock it now you gotta put the key in, turn it, and that'll unlock it. And then you have a latch right here. Pull this latch over, and that'll hold the door up. This is where you're gonna have things like leveling blocks, uh, the dump hoses, which you may or may not need, the spindle for the uh, stabilization jacks, and then this wheel for the uh, trailer stand if you decide to use it. Okay, power. If you want to hook up to either generator or shore power, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to slip this tab up, grab in here, pull this out. Here's a cord. So if you're at an RV park, this will plug right into their power outlet. Um, if you want to hook up to the generator or at someone else's home, you need to have this uh, connector, which I've got. This hooks into the three prong right here. And then you connect the included uh, extension cord and that'll just plug right into the house or uh, generator. And you get this back in, you just push it all the way back in. This thing will come out about eight or 10 feet. And then you can push that back in, clip this in, both sides, little tabs right here you need to click in and slide that down for travel. Okay, propane tank. If you're gonna use anything, the heater, stoves, you need to just turn this to open. And whenever you're driving, close it off and make sure all your appliances are turned off. That's all that is for the propane tank. Easy. Okay, the water heater is behind this panel. To access it, you have this tab, turn it up sideways and the panel will drop down. It's on the hinge. The instructions on how to light this thing are right here. Um, I'm gonna walk you through it. So this is your water heater. Um, oh, another thing, this is an indicator window, so when you have it lit and this is shut, you can just look through that window and you should be able to see the flame going. Um, this is your temperature adjustment. You can go from hot to warm. I usually leave it right in the middle. It's usually warm enough. Um, and then here's your uh, valve adjustment and your valve adjustment uh, position indicator. So this is telling us we're in pilot right now. Um, you can turn it to off and on 
So how to operate this is you turn it to the pilot, make sure your gas in the front from the propane tank is turned on. And uh, this is a two-handed job, so I'm just gonna light this up. Uh, you push and hold this down. While it's pressed, you're going to light, um, put the lighter in here, right here, and this is your pilot. And you're just gonna light that up, and it'll light once when you have that button pressed. So let me get that done real quick. Okay, so I have the red button pushed down. The flame is going. You gotta hold this for 30 seconds. Flame is on. That button's pushed down. So again, you push that down and light it. Then you hold it down for about 30 seconds. And once it's been held down for about 30 seconds, you can release it, release the red button, and you turn this to on. set now when you go to turn it off be very careful these components uh, might be warm or hot to the touch um, so I usually just uh, put a glove on and turn it or I'm very very careful when I just turn it with one finger just like this to avoid getting burnt and that's the water heater all right water connection so if you just want to fill the front water tank if you empty it out I'll usually have it full for you you just take this cap off put a hose in there um, Pressure doesn't matter, and you just turn it on until it fills up. It's a 30 gallon tank, so it might take a little bit to fill. And then just put this back on tightly. If you want to hook up to um, water, city water, this is your connection. Um, I've got a hose that I'm going to provide, Oops. and it just hooks up right in here. And on the hose I'm giving you, it's uh, got a pressure regulator, so you want to make sure that that is used. And this is just a normal hose connection so you can connect it to someone's house uh, water or at an RV parks water. It'll fit right in there. Um, the hose is going to be back in the cargo access area in a black plastic bag. Um, I ask that when you're done with the hose, empty it as best as you can of water and put it back in the bag. Um, so it's got a valve right here, on off valve. And this is your pressure regulator valve hooked to the hose. Um, all this really does is reduce the pressure going to from the city water connection to the vehicle or to the trailer um, so that it doesn't over pressurize your trailer lines and break them. Nobody wants that. So make sure and use that. Okay, water dumping. If you're going to dump the water, um, the main hose is right in here. And there's a connection. That makes it nice when you're dumping it. You can put that right into the ground. And here's your sewer hose. And this hooks up if you're on the back of the trailer, right underneath the water heater. This is your connection. So this is gonna hook right in there. Um, I have these plugs in, in the hose on both ends. That's to kind of prevent any water from seeping into the trailer and if there's any funny smells. Um, so you're just gonna loosen this cap, you turn it uh, counterclockwise, it'll pop off. You slide this on so that these tabs go around this little knob right there and it slides on. And then you always wanna do your black water first. Um, the reason for that is when you're all done, you don't wanna have sewage water in your hose. So you always dump black water. And uh, it's a good idea to take that water hose, hook it up to water and run some water through the toilet to flush it. And then that way you kind of flush the black tank. And then when you're done with the black, oh, to release this valve, you just pull this out. And then to push it back, you push it in towards the trailer. Um, and then when you're done with the black, you just uh, close, close the black valve and then open the gray valve by pulling this out. And then uh, same thing, when that thing's empty, go over to the sink and just pour some water down the sink with a hose from outside. You gotta be careful so you don't get water all over the place. But that'll flush the gray tank and it'll push all the water through the hose. And then when you're done, um, I like to get as much out of the hose as possible water. So I just hold it straight up, right up above the, uh, the drain in the ground 
get it all out and then put those plugs on both ends of the hose and put it back in the cargo area. Okay, the awning. If you decide you want to use the awning, this is how you use it. It's almost a two-person job, but you can do it with one. Um, first thing you need to do is go to the cargo area and pull out this rod. Um, this is for pulling out the awning. So that's first step. Second step is up here you have a knob. It says roll up, roll down. So what I do is I get my rod. And then I put this right here and pull this to the down position. Okay, now it's in the down position. The next thing you need to do is there's these clips right here. They should be all the way in. If they're not, you just press with your thumb on this side, finger on that side, and you squeeze and it'll pop out. So it pops this rail out of there. And you wanna make sure this knob is loose. And then do the same thing to the other side. So squeeze this, pops it loose. Make sure this is loose, okay? So that's the awning. Now you're gonna take your rod and you're gonna stick it in this strap right here, which is stuck in the door at the moment. Okay. And you're gonna wrap this through. This thing goes all the way out to 10 feet. Um, when you get to a certain point, you can just reach up and pull it out. Okay. So now that's awnings all the way out. The next step is you need to move this rail right here. And this thing slides up and down. As you can see. And you're just going to slowly move this. You want to go nice and easy, y'all, so this will bind up and it kind of becomes a pain to move. You slide it all the way until you get past this gray tab, and that gray tab clips into place. You want to do the other side as well. So you can run this runner all the way up past the gray tab, and it's clipped into place. Now that that's into place, you can come down here and you can grab this lever. And this is where it's nice to have two people move this up at this, together at the same pace. Now you have these. Push the lever down and it'll click into one of these hole tabs. And you got these tabs all the way up to here to raise up the awning. So now I've got that one in. I'm gonna to come to the other side. Raise this up. There. Okay. And then it's locked in. So I don't have it fully extended. But to give you the idea, that's what it looks like. You can extend these uh, rods all the way out. It goes a little bit higher. So then take it down. First thing you do is release this handle and let it go down. Go to the other side, do the same thing. Okay, and then once that's done, you need to depress this tab. So you can either push it down, but your finger's in the way. So it might get jammed. What you wanna do is come down here, and on this side there's this little tab. You can just pull that down and it releases this bracket. So you can just slide this all the way down. Oh, something I forgot to mention. When this is extended, uh, you're going to want to tighten these knobs down um, to hold it in place. I do not recommend using the awning if it's more than breezy outside. It can rip it off um, and make sure it's completely stowed properly before you transport the trailer. Otherwise, um, it'll rip it off the trailer as you're driving. So same thing, just grab this tab, pull down, and run this rail all the way down. And this is where it's nice to have a second person because as soon as you push it up on this, the awning will want to go and it goes kind of hard. So this is where it's good to have a second person um, to do it, but you just take this, push it to the down uh, roll up position, and then slowly let this up until it goes all the way up. And then I just leave that in the roll up position for transport. And then you take these and you just squeeze it with your hand like that, and it'll lock these tabs into place. 
going to do that on both sides. Then put your rod away in the cargo area and you're done.